Hey guys, Fearless Fame here. Welcome back to my channel. And I want to talk to you guys about last night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. It makes my ride home a little bit better. Um, I'll be looking at the road unless I get to a red light. So y'all just join me and let's roll, okay? So first of all, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm going to start with Nene, Cynthia, Peter, and Greg. I kind of felt like they went to me to talk about the little discussion. And I commend Cynthia because Cynthia was correct in one thing. If you are a true friend and you true friends, you should be able to sit down and talk things out and work things out. You should be able to sit down and say, hey, you hurt my feelings. I felt like you shouldn't have did this or I felt like you shouldn't have did that. So I do agree with her on that. But I don't feel like Nene's apology was sincere. And y'all let me know what y'all think. But I'm real funny when somebody do me wrong and then they come back. And she apologized. But she said, okay, Peter, I'm sorry for calling you the B word, but I meant to say you was acting like a B. Like, to me, you can't contradict. You can't, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but you can't apologize to me, but come back and try to make your statement sound correct. It's not really an apology. You know, it's like you trying to say what Nene normally says. I feel how I feel, and that's how I feel, and it's not going to change. And she always says that, and I feel like, her apology was also addressed in that manner. You know, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you a B, but I meant to say you was acting like a B. And that's, that wasn't, no. Mm -mm. I do agree that she crossed the line um, with the B word. I do agree that she crossed the boundaries um, with doing that. And I feel like Cynthia and Peter were correct to confront her. I don't think their relationship will ever be the same. I do commend Nene for having to sit down and stuff like that, but she still got slick. Even when they sat down, she was like, oh, we should do this before we order any food in case we don't want to eat afterwards. And Greg kind of gave her a look, and I don't know if y'all noticed that, but Greg kind of gave her a look when she said that, like, dang, we ain't even get started, Nene. Like, can we get started, you know? So he kind of gave her a look, and I'm with him on that look. That was crazy. Um, so they, they made up, you know, uh, yeah. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Um, Candy and Portia. I'm going to go to them because Portia need a weave slapped out of her head. Now, y'all know I like Portia. She dumb as hell. Um, but I do like her. But for her, you know, you're not up there with Gerald LeBert. You're not up there with none of these big time singers. And for you, and it could have been her attorney. It could have been her attorney making those demands true enough. But you should just be happy that Candy finna get your name out there in this stage play that some very, very, very popular people are going to be at and you are in it. And even though your contract is not done and your contract is not signed, you still show up to rehearsal so you know the moves. You don't say, as soon as this contract finish, I'll be ready to start. No, they're already rehearsing and Candy told you that rehearsal was Friday. So I'm going to be at rehearsal even though my contract is not signed yet. Do you know why? Because I want Candy to use me at the next play and the next play and the next play. And I also want somebody else to see my dedication and use me in their play. So I just honestly feel like Portia is messing this up big time. Big, big time. She shouldn't have even made no demands or went to her attorney. You know, or maybe went to her attorney, but the demands could have stayed out. Just make sure your money was right. So, I don't know about that. Phaedra and Apollo, they so nonchalant to me. I don't even think we seen too much of Phaedra and Apollo um, last night. I can't even think. Like, they done pissed me off so much. I can't even think if Phaedra and Apollo was on last night or what happened. Like, bump them. The junk is fake. Okay. Kenya gets this little fake baby. She's over there talking to Marlo with this little fake baby. And the lady comes in. It's like, Kenya, can you get a man first? Can you get a sperm donor first? Can you get pregnant first? I mean, I don't know what Kenya doing. I really don't. I think Kenya trying to stay relevant on the show. She has nothing. She has nothing to show for it. She has nothing to go for. She is just trying to stay relevant on this show. Now she got this little dumb behind baby talking about learning how to do a baby. And I mean, she said she got enough money for two nannies and this and that and the other. But honestly, guys, I don't know where Kenya gets money from because I don't even know why kenya is popular or relevant like i really do not know what makes kenya popular or relevant or who you know she was miss america miss usa tell her to come for me because i'm sending for her miss america miss usa whichever the one it is 
in 1964, we in 2014, I want her to get her life. Where is she getting this money from? What is she doing? Like, seriously, you got money for babies and nannies and stuff? Okay, maybe she do. Maybe she has endorsements. Y'all holler at me and let me know because I don't know what she has or how she has money. And it's like retarded. She has this baby that she's carrying around. Then she goes to the, I don't know if it was the dog shop or the baby store to buy dolls and buy stuff. Why are you buying stuff for a baby doll that's not real that the lady coming back in a week to pick up? Y'all may not believe me, but Kenya crazy as hell. She cray cray. Yep, she cray cray. Crazy. I don't know what to say about that. Y'all let me know, because that girl crazy. She don't need to be bringing no children into this world. And Marlo sitting there laughing, looking at her like... And Marlo even asked her, are you serious? Are you sure you want to do this? You know? Honey child, y'all holler at your girl down below. Let me know what y'all think. I just got off the road. I'm tired. I'm here from out of town. Um, I know I had no face of the day today because i was traveling but i will tell y'all what i had on my traveling makeup so y'all can see how it did this is a cat bondi locket tattoo um foundation and powder okay and you can see i'm dewy i wouldn't say i'm really really as oily as i normally get but i'm dewy but remember it is now 5 25 in the evening and i put this makeup on at eight o'clock this morning and i have not blotted once i have not touched up once I have been on the road. I have not done anything to it. So it's dewy, but it's not as oily as I normally am. And I love it. And I love it for pictures. And this is what I took out of town for my pictures. Normally, I would have blotted by now and it would be um, fine. But I just wanted to show you guys that. That's not a bad investment, the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation. Okay? So your girl is going to go unpack and get settled. Y'all holler at your girl down below about those housewives of Atlanta. And I see y'all the next time we deeper chat.